welcome back again and i hope that you're all doing well so just for a recap in my last couple of videos we went through designing the characters for smile and for those who are new to the channel smile is the animated short film that i'm working on and here you will basically be getting videos showing the process leading up to its completion all right so this scene that you guys just saw is the, the first scene that will make it into the film and i'm going to give you guys a quick run through or a 10 minutes run through of how it was done what i'm really excited about is the, the workflow that i well after many 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 weeks of research well many months of research i found a workflow courtesy of olaf stern and if you watch my previous videos you'll see that i've been following up olaf for some time now so i want to give him the credit for this workflow so it's a combination of 2d and 3d elements and and what i came to realize really is that it's a skill that takes patience so it, it took me a lot of patience to rearrange objects for the scene exactly how i wanted patience to rearrange the scene itself and creating and setting up the camera exactly what I wanted and not to mention exploring and picking the right color for your scene. Yeah I went through I can say uh, maybe I took maybe one hour just to find the right color but it all paid off and I enjoyed every bit of it. And this is how it looked after exporting the raw sharp edged geometry from the 3D software and it was exported as a PNG and you have to keep in mind that when exporting the PNG you have to remember the layers so in my case the wall I used that for the background layer and the bookshelf and the chest of drawers you can say that those were the mid-ground and then the empty canvases was placed behind that on its own layer but to export these on the own layer you would have to enable the redshift tag so this would apply for those using redshift with cinema body so after enabling your redshift tab you get a menu like this and you would go ahead and turn on override so what this does is that it allows you to enable the light that affects the object the shadows that the object cast and it allows you to enable and disable the physical object itself so to export these on your own layers the bookshelf and the drawers i would have to enable those and I have to keep in mind that I want everything to be seen, the light, the shadow and the object and for what I don't want to be seen and if you look closely on the left side of the big bookshelf you realize that that side is dimmer than the other side of the bookshelf and that is because the wall, the left wall was not reflecting the light onto it so bringing in back the left wall I would then turn off primary visible ray and that is basically disabling the physical object but leaving the lights and the shadows. And then the same thing would apply for the floor. It's not as simple as just turning off a layer. But I wish it was that simple. So jumping back into Photoshop, this is where I would then add my own kind of 2D paint texture to it. Yeah, but why this workflow though? Why not just do the entire background in 2D or in 3D? But a good question you can ask yourself is maybe what works best for you? So in my case, the combination of 2D and 3D animation is something that I've always wanted to do. As I mentioned in the starting of this video, I've been researching months after months to find a way how I could achieve that. Because I love the, the look that I get from 3D animation. And then to combine that with 2D, you get the freedom to paint and to add your own kind of creative style to it yeah and then painting and to the animation is something that i would maybe say i have more of a mastery in than 3d animation so the painting aspect for me 
isn't really a problem but being able to combine that 2d skill with a 3d it's like almost like combined two different universes so for example if you watch like maybe amazing will have come back you realize that they combine many different medias together to achieve the end products so you would say stop motion it's a 3d and it's a 2d so that is kind of something that we want to achieve something almost like that kind of look you can see some sort of realism combined with the imagination in a sense yeah and being that it's a one-man project so basically i'm the one that will be doing everything for now so i'm the one that will be doing the animation i'm the one that that's writing directing you know so that is also a major contributor of the time frame each scene will take to be completed yeah so i also have to keep in mind that it's my first time using an airflow like this so i think the more scenes i create that would result in being more versatile in how I approach each scene and something important that i should mention is researching the colors that you chose to use that's one of the most important things i think that would fall in the art direction uh, to do the research piece on how laura looks because this is her room so i have to keep in mind how she would look when placed in the room and don't be afraid to use references referencing play a major role in creating this so always ensure to reference you can either reference things from real life or you can look back on uh, maybe a scene from a movie like this one. Alright, so after adding all my 2D textures, this is how the fire render looks. Bringing those 2D textures you now back into Cinema 4D, you just do that by creating a new material, enabling only luminance, and then bringing that texture onto the material, and then you'd place that material onto the object, so for example, the canvas. And then under the projection menu, you would change circle to a camera mapping, and then you'd calculate the camera and then the camera that, that you used for the scene you then bring it into the camera menu but the materials can only stretch this far if you notice when I move the camera past its limit you realize that the materials kind of break so yeah that's not something that you have to be cautious about oh yeah there's something extra to mention that method won't work when getting the flowers and the vase. So to do that now, I would then create a plane, create a material for the plane, and follow the same steps. But for this one, you would enable luminance and alpha, so that would cause only the flowers to be seen. So I had to kind of work around the system. All right, so here is another look at the final scene after animating the camera. And for the next video, I'm going to try to push this scene a little further with some visual effects. So.
So until next time, I will let you guys continue to remain safe and keep creating. I'm out. <laughs>